apply. There we go, because I can always edit it or have it edited. Uh, did you have a good weekend? Yeah, 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 pretty, pretty good. We had a, a barbecue, but my barbecue decided to uh, have a grease fire and engulf itself. So um, is, it a, is, it a gas, is it a gas grill? It's it, it's the cylinder gas grill, you know, and yeah. um, I cooked so much chicken on it with a lot of soaked in olive oil. <laughs> Eventually, it just went up and up and up. It happens quick. <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm going to burn my house to happen. <laughs> hey, good morning, Paul. How are you? Good morning. Sorry about that. I had trouble as someone did last week finding the meeting passcode, but I found yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to. Where, I'm going to go and that's the first note from this meeting is uh, is figure out this where the, the passcode came from. Um, it depends on how you set up the meeting. Um, and... Yeah, I thought it was set. It was set up so that any, anyone could start it. So if I wasn't here, yeah, um, you guys could have the meeting, you know, regardless. Something changed. So yeah. I'll go in and figure out what changed. Yeah, understood. Um, Larry was busy uh, sharing that he tried to burn his house down. Oh, nice job. He apparently didn't succeed. <laughs> Luckily, I, I mean, the barbecue. Just George asked how the weekend was, and I said oh, we had a family over for a barbecue Saturday, and I almost burnt everything to a crisp because the our uh, our uh, barbecue uh, had a grease fire and engulfed oh. it. So um, it, since it goes up, I'm able to turn off the gas and get slowly. My brother and I, piece by piece, got the chicken off. Crispy chicken, I'm sure. It was, in there. It was, you know, it was <laughs> all good. I hope you guys had a good time. I see Jack got on board here. Hey, Jack, how are you, man? Good morning, guys. How are you? I rolled out the uh, the ninety nine dollar Weber kettle, and and smoked a brisket. It turned out it turned out okay for the amount of neglect it got. It, it turned out okay. <laughs> Opposite problem, Larry. He's keeping the fire going, but you know, yeah, yeah. keeping charcoal to 225 degrees is a, it's a labor. So. George, this morning I sent you to both your growth drive and your core value uh, emails uh, what I put together for score uh, for awesome. walking people through online, live, answering the questions for a uh, core value for a uh, discover. Awesome. Okay, great. I'm looking forward to checking that out. By the um, way, that guys, this is being recorded. Um, we can decide afterwards if we want to post it or not, but this is being recorded. Uh, yeah, uh, I understand. Okay. Uh, Thanks, the Paul. local the local score chapter that I'm part of had no problem with my presenting it. They didn't have problems with leaving the reports and other things branded. Uh, business accelerants rather than uh, doing it to score as you had suggested uh, we'll see if that stays and um, but uh, basically it's set up so where I go through each question and then um, help them answer it and they'll answer it online in another window on their computer and then they'll get a report at the very end and I can briefly describe you know what they're what they've gotten cool I'm so. looking forward to checking it out thank you it's, uh, we got to, I'm trying to keep the standing um, Wednesday webinars going. And uh, that would be a great, I, I think we discussed it. That would be a great webinar. Let's get it on the calendar. Okay. If you're open to it. I, I'm open to it on the right Wednesday. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, Larry had suggested, guys, that, uh, that we talk about the wording that would go around well actually larry what did you suggest i'll be better a better moderator oh well it, in the uh, lx council world recently they are checking everyone's linkedin to see if the language is correct uh, that best represents what we're doing in our uh, licensing with lx council but also checking to see if we're reflecting the proper branding from their branding guidelines. And it dawned on me, I actually do not have something that represents, other than my own business, something that represents growth drive, uh, core value, <clears throat> in the fashion to that of LX Council. 
uh, and, and thinking maybe there there's value in that. And what would that wording be? And second for you, George, what would be the consistent branding that we would represent in that wording? If there's value, you know, I, I, I know I, I, it's actually, uh, what I love is that we're about to crowdsource something that's on my to-do list. So in the spirit of getting things off my desk, I am thrilled that you brought this up and I would love, you know, at the end of the day, and Bob is, um, Bob is logging in right now, you know, if, if we can, as a, you know, a, a committee of the, a committee of the willing, uh, start discussing you got that reference ball <laughs> if we can start if we can come i have some ideas but i think it's very valuable and as we evolve from as growth drive evolves from where we are today to a licensing program which i'm you know which is the evolution that is underway um uh, this would obviously be a natural component uh, because ultimately I want to support you guys as you go to market. I want to help you connect with business owners. I mean, that's, that's the mission we're on. How do we connect the expertise with middle market businesses and, and having a consistent message as part of that. So Larry, I, I've seen that in the LX council and I'm, I take my training next week. Um, and I've talked about where I would put the LX Council information on my own company's website, and that's been okayed. I don't have it in my LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is intended to maybe drive people to the website. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if we do growth drive. I would, I'd be more likely to want to do core value advisor, uh, which would drive people then further maybe to my website or to my branded location for doing an assessment. But George knows I get a lot of crap uh, going to the generic and I have to go in and remove prospects because people, people or bots are hitting the button and uh, just putting in garbage uh, in there. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else has that problem. Bots, yeah, it's the scourge of the internet, right? Yeah. But letting people know that you're part of something. I, I'm part of uh, something called Empower Oregon, which is just a group like Growth Drive of people like us that are, have a common goal: uh, no money being paid, nothing. And I did put that out there. So mm -hmm. I could easily see putting core value out there. Um, help me what you're thinking is if we would put core value or growth drive and if growth drive, why growth drive? That's actually, I'll bite my tongue. And if <laughs> anybody, anyone? <laughs> okay, I'll jump, I'll jump into the fray. So Paul, uh, you know, my, my, from, my thinking and guys shoot holes in this. Good morning, Bob. Um, Good morning. So core value is a tool, right? And we have this this tool, and it, and it's out there, and all of you are using it in your practice, and that's terrific. Now we have some choices. Once we have this tool, what are we going to do with it? Right? The tool stands alone, and then, and there are a lot of people who subscribe to core value who have nothing to do with growth drive, um, and there are a few people in the growth drive community who aren't using the core value tool. And that's great. It's whatever works for your practice. What growth drive is, is the, is the training and support to take, to, to take this tool, not just to take this tool, it's the training and support to, to help our clients move forward. Right. And if we use core value as the analysis tool, terrific. If we don't, we still want to move our clients forward. And I made the, uh, I was talking to someone over the weekend and I said, um, you know, EOS, let's look at EOS, right? As a stalking horse, EOS doesn't really <coughs> have software, but they're helping move companies forward. And I was trying to help this person get perspective on where core value fits into the growth drive. Well, the growth drive is far bigger than simply the tool. So when someone decides that they're going to, they're going to use the core of the, the, growth drive intellectual property um, the process the templates 
the, you know, the, 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 all of the IP that we've gathered under that shed, um, I think that says far more. It's intended to say more to the, to the, uh, to the world, then I have a tool and I use it. It's it's designed. It's our intent is to say, hey, I understand how to move you from where you are today to where you want to be tomorrow. Be it growing cash flow, be it um, creating predictable revenue, be it uh, creating high uh, shareholder value. Does that make sense? Just to, I mean, I know I sound like a broken record, but that's. Does that make sense? Does it put core value in the con in context? So Paul, that goes to answering your question yeah. about you know why would we say we we use Growth Drive? Because Growth Drive actually does something. Core value provides an analysis. It shoots, uh, in fact, in the same conversation. So core value is like the it's like the uh, the uh, CAT scan, right? It's a CAT scan machine, and yeah. we're going to shoot a lot of film. And then we need the, the training to read that film. And we need the, the therapy, the, the, the ongoing therapy that is gonna take what's, what we find in that film and fix it. And growth drive is, is, is those two parts. Now so, I'll shut up. So we're talking about, you're ta sorry I got here late, couldn't find the passcode. Um, you're talking about putting something on LinkedIn, right? Yes. So don't you want to have something, at least for me, I want to have something on LinkedIn that's a call to action. And, and, and so whatever is, is we only have this short amount of time that somebody's going to select a link, right? And, and, and we have to <coughs> capture them in that short amount of time. And if, if, if we send them to something that's going to make them do a bunch of stuff i think we're going to lose them faster than we're going to gain them unless there's a pretty quick call to action so i like the idea of the assessments and getting people to take the assessment because then they get to see some value coming from it doesn't mean we couldn't have something on the growth drive segment but i think we need a call to action I, uh, Bob, and I agree with that. I think we're having two, I think there are two uh, issues in the ring right now. One is, what would we say, if anything, about using the growth drive IP? And the other is a marketing, how do I get people, <coughs> how do we move people forward on the buyer's journey? Larry, you were talking more about, I, I, I understood it to be more about tagging. Like, okay, I've been through the growth drive certification workshop. Now, what am I going to say about that? How do I let the world know? What am I going to say to the world about having that expertise, which Bob, you have Jack, um, you know, you guys all have in some, it, it some depth. Well, I was originally, I just, it, again, I, I could go to my own site and just simply realize that uh, I have LinkedIn in there why not put something related to growth drive? But now as I hear the conversation, George, I'm reminded of uh, a core tenant of all of this, all, all, all roads lead to somewhere in the website that you have. And that, that website is the center <coughs> of, 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 the, uh, of the wheel and everything leads into that. So we could then have that action. So everything should be a call of to action, as Bob was saying, to yep. that website. So as I rethink it, and I'm looking at my own at the same time, maybe I don't do good enough a job here really having a clear call to action, regardless of what I have here. Um, that, that, that needs to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is about a call to action, ultimately. It's not a resume. It it is. It is. And, and are you saying? So we, well, let's to use LX Council as our stocking horse. LX Council says that you are an LX Council certified licensed partner, right? And that's what they were. That's what they were being policing. And I think that's what prompted your your suggestion. Um. Yeah, give, allow me to uh, 
share my screen and then happy to hang on one sec yeah. more if we're using lx council as a model because <coughs> because that, you know, how do you say something that's intriguing and that was my by the way and and tina you, you know my my loop back with tina was that's great i'm happy to make this change on my linkedin profile but what does it tell the world i'm not telling the world anything right because to your point bob i want people to say oh george is an lx council i'm a I'm, you know a master licensee i'm a certified licensed partner i've been through the mma course um I'm part of a group, you know, all of those things, you know, that, that the world might actually care about. The fact that I'm an LX Council certified licensed partner um, <clears throat> is important to LX Council's brand and something similar about core value and about growth drive would be important to those two companies. So go ahead. Sorry. Well, everyone could see this is mine. This is uh, approved by LX Council and consistent with what Tina believes is the right thing. But Paul, you got me thinking differently and Bob, you too, a call to action to the website. And I don't think when you look at that or even my CEO Prince leadership is doing that, All right? I'm not, I'm not sure mine does either, but at least you have a email and a phone number there in several locations for them to go to. And anybody with half a knowledge of the internet knows that princeleadership.com is your website and they can go check mm -hmm. that out. I'd suggest there's another reason people go to LinkedIn and that's to take another step in developing trust in the person and their expertise to help them. Yes. Yeah. It's Put, putting in the front line, the very first line, the contact information was recommended to me by a high level social media group that comes from Vistage. Okay. It's interesting. Can you, can you go it, to the it, top of your um, profile too? Now, now go down a little bit, a little bit further, a little further, <laughs> and a little further. Okay, keep going. Wow. Uh, featured okay. there. That's a section where it's also possible to pin something and have an article or a presentation, whether it be about LX Council, core value, or uh, growth uh, drive. Yes, and all the all the wording that's associated with it, and tagging. Right. Yeah, that was taught to me as well. So here, here is that. Yeah, um, and there you see you've got a, a well, you got to go back to LinkedIn, but you could have any other link in there you want to to your website or something. You know, Larry, you're doing something more overtly that I advocate, and I will go and change my LinkedIn profile. I my contact information is, um, where is it? Maybe under more contact info. It's all right there, right? But so that's only available to you if you're a first level connection. So. And thank you very much, Paul. Um, I actually did not know that. You learn something new every day. And I will, uh, I'm going to go and, and follow Larry's example. Because what I found is that you don't get, you're going to get, we get trash anyhow. Um, I don't think that it has a meaningful impact that I'm getting exponential, exponentially more junk uh, because my contact info is in there. Larry, how much junk do you get? In my website? Yeah, so for example, right here, anyone in the, in the world can go and see your email address. Oh, yeah, I get the, I get, the, yeah, certainly. I feel like uh, it comes from Eastern Europe the, the, you, when I look at the language. Uh, but I, I don't, not lately. I have not gotten lately, but there was a while there. Uh, my info at princeleadership.com was junk. Yeah. Yeah, I just go, you know, like we all do every morning. It's one of the first things. Click, 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 click. But this morning it was horrible because I actually took two days off. Horrible. Whatever. It took a few more minutes than usual. Um, but yeah. I don't get a lot anymore for whatever reason. That's junk. And because I believe that Google and Apple are out there trying the two biospheres in which we operate um, are out there minimizing trying to strain that stuff out which which brings the challenge back <clears throat> to bob's point about how do you get someone to hear your message and go to a call you know 
click on a call to action. Because right here, what you're, what you're actually highlighting here, Larry, you have experience. You have an Alex Council certified licensed partner, CEO Prince Leadership, friend of Vistage, but you have, I have not yet given you, and then you wouldn't be under any obligation to present, but right now you're a certified growth specialist um, under Growth Drive, right? Um, would we want to tell the world, and then this is a question, right? Would we want to tell the world? So if you've been through the launch course on the Growth Drive side, you're a growth driver. If you've been through the workshop, the in-person workshop, you're a certified growth specialist. In the core value world, I mean, you're a core evaluator. It's what I've nicknamed people. What would we want to say, if anything? Do we want to talk about the, the fact that we use a <coughs> an East Wing hammer um, or the fact that we know how to frame a house? And that's I think that's the core of the debate. There, there's another alternative that occurred to me. There's a section you can have on your LinkedIn profile for licenses and certifications. Uh, I don't know if everybody has that. I have... I have that and I've got uh, seven different licenses and certifications. I got five, four certifications listed there. P uh, Private Director Association, National Association of Corporate Directors, Disc Styles Communication Consultant, and YOS certification. You could easily have Growth Drive or something there. Either as opposed to putting it directly in your LinkedIn experience or in addition to. There you are. Licenses and certs. So that would be part of the recommendation. Um, if you're a, we'll just use growth drive for a moment. If you're a growth driver and you've been through the launch course, um, add to your licenses and certifications, the you are welcome to add to your licenses and certifications, the following language. And we would provide that language uh, does that make sense? Guys, what are your thoughts? Barry, you're deep in film. <laughs> well, I, um, yeah, I mean, as much as you can put in LinkedIn, it's a big advantage. Um, I just have a different feeling about, about LinkedIn uh, based on you know, my experience. Um, it's being used more as a social media, you know, a social tool now than it has ever been before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, more like a Facebook, uh, I'm not on Facebook, but, um, you know, for me personally, I get my clients through strictly through referral. I've never received, <clears throat> when I talk to people, my uh, clients about LinkedIn, you know, they'll go, but, you know, they don't really look at it that closely. So it's just a different experience. I, um, the website, I think, is a different story. Interesting. So but I don't think people will, well, I don't think people hire, I don't think business owners at the level that um, at least I want to deal with will go to LinkedIn and hire me off of LinkedIn. Um, I, I would agree with that. Um, I would say that when when someone makes an introduction, so if someone said, "Hey George, I really want you to uh, why don't you you should you should chat with Barry. He's got you know blank." First thing I'm going to do is is Google. Um, and by the way, Safari uses Google search engine, so I'm going to end up googling Barry Goodman Chicago. And your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn does a great job. Up, you're going to pop, boop, and I jump on there and do a scroll through, like, oh yeah, look, oh check it out, you know. I don't really, I never, I essentially never go to the connections we have in common, but in terms of like trying to place, start to understand who you are, um, LinkedIn is, is sort of the first place. It has a, it's a font of information compared to, for example, going to the, going to your website where there's going to be a lot less information. Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly that uh, when somebody <clears throat> the first somebody, the first thing they do is they go on and, and, and they looked at their LinkedIn profile. Uh, but as far as making a decision to hire or not hire, it's not going to be based on LinkedIn. No, I, I agree. LinkedIn is just, I totally agree. 
no one's going to hire any of us without talking to us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, fascinating guys. And this is a, a webinar that's going to come on in, in the next couple of weeks. I talked to my friend, Jeff Sauls at American City Business Journals. He is now um, running a, a subsidiary called BizLeads. And BizLeads, at about $1,300 a year, you get, um, it's, it's leads from the American City Business Journals world. And uh, it's really good information. Flat fee. They don't care how many people you look at. Terrific. It's $1,300. He still has to have a one-on-one. -on -one. People still want to talk to, to them, not necessarily Jeff, but to someone on his team before making that investment. I think that goes to your point, Barry. You know, we, right. we especially in our demographic, right? So Jack, again, you, it, go ahead, Barry. On this page, it, 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 it shows me in particular as um, uh, for, for Twitter at the bottom there. Um, yep. I've never been on Twitter. I don't even know what Twitter is. I'm being sarcastic. Um, <clears throat> There's another Barry Goodman in the Chicago area, apparently. Well, there is actually. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah. Kind of hey, fun. you with hair all over. <laughs> <And a beard. laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, that's interesting. But there's no, and that's something, unfortunately, in my name, there, it never happens, but that's something that happens to all of us. Um, and by the way, what you're hitting on with EPI here is something I'm considered doing for, for people who want it um, on our website. We're not there yet, but, but uh, you know, would you want to be findable on the website? You're certainly findable in circle, which sort of jumps this step. Um, anyway. So I, I think it all goes back to purpose where, where Paul, you were, and, and Bob, you mentioned it from the beginning. What, what is the purpose of what we're trying to do? And I think today for me, uh, I already have a takeaway that I look at uh, LinkedIn almost like uh, an advanced colorful resume where I don't think that's the function I wanted to serve, although I have a few features in there that are pretty good. And I, I have to reconsider what I want LinkedIn to be for and do and how it feeds into my website and how does growth drive, whether I put it under uh, licensing and certifications or I put it in as a separate current present role of some sort, or right up the front, right up in the front, because when you go to the very beginning, this is another uh, right in here. Some people don't get past here. Larry, somebody that's a special, uh, a couple of people that I know are specialists in um, in LinkedIn say that this this page right here that you're referring to is probably the most important as far as getting the wording right because if they'll they'll look at that and based on that they'll go further or they'll just close it up yeah i agree with that i and that kind of goes to taglines which is something i'd love to you know what can we say that's pithy about why you would scroll down and that goes to bob's point you know why the heck would i scroll down and, and Larry, go ahead. Um, you, you see where it says LX Council there at the top right of your page? That's because it's the first thing on your experience list. Yeah. You know, what's interesting too, Paul, is I, I was trying to figure out how to rearrange, and if you know how to do it, it'd be great, uh, the uh, experience list. Yeah, that's, it's quite easy. You could just move them up and down. Um, Let's do it. See the arrows there? I think that'll uh, help you move it. There you go. Reorder. That must you be a put, new feature. You can put Prince Leadership at the top if you want. Yeah, go, press and hold that and pull it up. Right where you were on, on the, the thing. Just hold that and slide it up. There you go. 
What do you got, Bingo? Oh, I learned something new today. That's great. Oh, so now when top. you go to the top, it should show CEO uh, up. I, I have the to top and hit the back arrow. Hit the back arrow next to experience. Now go to the top of your page. And now you got Prince Leadership there. Uh, what I want to do is get rid of Columbia University. What I want to put there is, is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what? This is, guys, I appreciate it. I think everyone take a look at your whole, very top of your front page of LinkedIn. And, and I, I already see that I'm going to rework something in here. This is what I love about, I, this is what I love about these conversations. We, you know, we start one place and then it naturally ends up somewhere else. And I, I've got a, I've got a takeaway here. Now, what we, the question we didn't answer is do we want to have i think we, we i should make available to you and and i'd be i'd love to have help crafting it a, a brief description of you know what it means to be for example someone who uses core value what it means to be someone who has gone through the launch course who's become certified what does that mean in a in a in a sense <clears throat> And yeah, I, I would favor having something we could put on LinkedIn or onto our web pages, okay. uh, something that better describes and, and um, reliably, consistently subscribe describes uh, core value and growth advisor. I'm sorry, growth drive. <laughs> well, do we want to? Uh, I mean, we can have this. I'm, you know me. I don't believe believe in little secrets. I mean, we can have this conversation publicly inside Circle. In, in, in as comments to this coffee clash, we can we can just start working on it, or I can create a private room. We can go into the dev lab and uh, and do it more privately, only to avoid confusion out in the world. So, and I'm not busy volunteering us. Just for for me, class, Circle would be fine, but. Um as a discussion item in there. And, and I would suggest since you, it's your, um, brand George, that you put out the first flyer or the first uh, well, white flag or whatever of what those wording should be. And then we can shoot at it. <laughs> I'll share, uh, I'll share three alternatives. Um, yeah. this morning, I have three that I've been noodling on and I would greatly value your feedback. Uh, I'll put them. In, I, I'll throw them up there. I have one for core, core value hasn't changed. It's growth drive that's that's the net new, and uh, so I'm happy to put it in there. And then the logo can show up on LinkedIn because you already have a separate LinkedIn page for growth drive. That's correct. I don't yeah. know if there's a web page or a LinkedIn profile for core value. There is. Okay. Yep. There are a couple, and I and I. Candidly, that's done. The there are there are a couple of things there that need to go back and. I have a landing page for Discover. So in my website, I have good. I haven't looked at this in probably two years in terms of wording. Take a fifteen minute evaluation, discover the key growth opportunities. I don't focus on exit. Mine's more on growth. And <clears throat> boom, right there. Not long. Click here to get started. Boom. I like that. I like it. I don't have a landing page for it. And same thing for Growth Drive. You could have a landing page on your site. Sure. Right. Now, what I haven't done is a LinkedIn. I'm sorry. A, a uh, LX Council. You know, it's interesting, Paul. You just said something. I wonder... Let's scratch my head. So let's say we did one for growth drive. Do we want people to provide a little bit of qualifying information? They go and they go to a landing page for growth drive and we ask them some basic qualifying information. Like, what are you trying to do? Do you want to grow your business, make it easier to run? Are you, do you want to focus on shareholder value? You, you know, there, there are a handful of questions we would, we could ask so that you can see activity on your website. I'm a big believer in, in uh, the power of, of someone sharing a little information and going right back to them in the moment and saying, Hey, I see you're doing some research. Are you finding the information you're looking for? And if they are terrific, 
right? If and and we can still give them our direct contact information and say if you have any other questions, call me. Um, it, you've just sort of. But what what Larry mean, just showed us was a landing page on his site. On his site for core value, yes. Right. You're talking the same thing. And then if you've got a service you've hired to monitor your website, just like I, some, I'm on some websites and 30 seconds later, I'm getting a phone call from them. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly right. So can we use HubSpot forms, for example, <clears throat> um, to say, because the, a lot of that is free. So to say, okay, well, guys, embed this code on your, you, you know, here's a landing page. It's free. And here's what, what would go into it. And if you, if you get an email that someone has, you know, clicked send, you know, we, the best practice is to get hold of them, you know, stop what you're doing because they are looking right now. And, uh, and the, the analogy is if I'm, you know, if I go in to buy a new suit, the best time for the salesperson to walk up to me is, you know, in, in that moment, not two weeks later after I've left the store saying, Hey, I know you looked at a suit. So uh, yeah, talk about branding. I was at uh, men's warehouse and the kid with uh, blue jeans, a, a shirt, a t-shirt on the outside and uh, tennis shoes was not my branding for men's warehouse. <laughs> and I did not want to be with him. <laughs> That's funny. That, but that you're exactly right. So, all right. I know we've uh, we've gone past the half hour. How's everybody doing for time? I got to head out. So. You got to head out. All right. Uh, guys, what do we net uh, out? Um, I'm going to post three three. I'm going to post and make a post to uh, Inside Circle. I'll do it in the comments on this coffee clutch. Um, you know, give. There are a lot of other people in the community who might uh, might want to chime in, and um, and if there's someone, guys, you know, how to do you to do the at? So if you did at Larry, Circle will populate Larry Prince, and he he gets an email. So if you use the at Barry Goodman at George Salmon, if you want to mention someone or ask a question or bring you know Anna Halliburta in for <coughs> you know, at Anna, she'll get a, a note that she's been mentioned in a comment, and that can bring other voices. If we if you if you think someone has uh, would be valuable to the conversation, please feel free to add them. And I'll, that'll be my, that's my action item. My key takeaway is uh, that it's important to go back and look at your LinkedIn profile periodically. I post like hell on LinkedIn, but um, this is gonna cause me to go back and look. Uh, Barry, you have a key takeaway? Uh, yeah, reordering the um, uh, experience thing. You know, Paul, that was, very helpful. Thank you. It's a little things. You want to toss it to someone? Well, uh, Larry. Well, I, I want to move my LinkedIn to a call to action better. And I want to update my website. I just noticed a few old wordings that I haven't changed in two years. And I think it needs a refresh. And I can do that myself. I don't need to get my web person to make word changing. Changes. So By the way, Larry, do you mind if I use your your landing page as an example? People ask all the time. Yeah, um, it's fine. I mean, I it, it was Sue who helped me with it originally. Okay, great. And, and and with what to do and thoughts around it, and it's 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 worked well ever since. So, okay, uh, uh, Jack. Uh, well, um, I'm just spellbound. This was an awesome conversation, guys. I was learning something every sentence. So. I'm grateful and thank you all for the sharing what you did today. Some impressive LinkedIn sites there too. And uh, I'll you. go to Bob. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like Barry in the way of, I don't get leads off my LinkedIn. Okay, I get them all through referrals. But uh, to put somebody out there that I talked to recently, Scott Barth does a lot on LinkedIn and I know in the conversation with him, he's looking to make some changes. I think he might get more leads from his. So I, I'd really like to learn, you know, um, what people are doing to get those leads. Because I looked at LinkedIn as just another resume. It's like my website, it's a resume, right? And they've got to talk to me. But if there's a way to actually get leads, yeah, I, I want the easy way out of getting leads by having somebody find me. Um, I, I think it's a great conversation that we can all learn from and, and gain knowledge and hopefully 
gain something out of by figuring this thing out of how best to utilize it. So, yeah, uh, I'll throw it over to Paul. A couple things. So as technology savvy as I am, when I'm in a meeting like this, I still have to use sticky notes to take my takeaways <laughs> and then I convert it to a on screen sticky note that I have. Um, Barry, to your comment. Um, so I got a LinkedIn request from a CEO of a company in Michigan because he heard he was on some conversation and he heard my name as somebody I should contact. But the contact came in through LinkedIn. So somebody mentioned my name in a meeting. He went to LinkedIn. He connected with me on LinkedIn and said, can we meet? So is that a referral or is that a LinkedIn or both? <laughs> That's interesting. You know, it, it, and I get so many messages. I have almost 9,000 uh, connections. I get so many messages, essentially all of which are people trying to get my, like yeah. fishing, right? They want their marketing. That, uh, that to Larry's earlier point, having your email address right up at the top, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and get mine out. Uh, thank you, Paul. I didn't know it was only first context. I'm going to put it out in the world. Um, because how do we have LinkedIn how do we make it easy for someone who comes on the LinkedIn to find us? And whether it's whether you put a URL to a landing page or you put your direct email address, you know, that's up to you. But Larry, do you have people that are uh, that you don't know that fill out that take the discover from your website? No. Okay. One uh, no, 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 no one who has blindly done it. All these connections, it has never happened where someone has blindly done it. Yeah, you I have to filter people to take it through my website okay. all the, through the years. Absolutely. All right. So you draw a way for them to just easily get not just go to a blind discover site, but to do so associated with me and controlled through the, my website landing page. Okay. Yeah, it's it's we got to get them in the buyer's journey to where they went to where we've created some trust. So either we've referred them to the landing page, or they've they've consumed. Maybe it's in you know in an automation um, where they've they've led themselves to saying, you know what, I really do want to take this, and it doesn't, you know, the the data is in. If you just plop discover, it's just like saying, hi, I'm George, marry me. Uh, it, it's a it's a it's a big ask because they're going to give some some information that most CEOs think of as closely held, like revenues, employee count, and then they're going to share the operational details of their business. Never mind that it's absolutely confidential and it's not going to go anywhere except into Larry's and their inbox. We still have to create that trust. So Larry's answer doesn't surprise me. So George, what has been your experience with other users as like a drip campaign that leads to, you know, like a, a, a page that Larry has? That is. Um, people who have a well-designed and and there are a few organizations that have well-designed marketing uh, campaigns that drive people to it i would still and barry that and know that there's some some examples on in the knowledge the core value knowledge base right right but i would still I, I stand by my you know discover is best used as a closing you know you let's get someone to the point where we're saying hey if you know this is what it's like to work with me, and if I'm going to work with you, I want to make sure that I can help you. That you're going to get a return on investment, and the only way to do that is to get a better understanding of your business. And let's you know let's do that. And then you you know you don't have to. You're not selling core value. You you're selling your services, your expertise, and and the discover analysis becomes a great vehicle for illustrating the types of problems to which you you are a relevant solution. Okay, I got it. Did that I hope that answered long-winded answer to a simple question. Oh no, absolutely answers the you know the but question. People are using it effectively in the buyer's journey, right. but just putting it in in your signature on your which I would, you know, there's no harm in putting it in, but don't be surprised if you get few, uh, if you get few, if compliance is low. What I would say though, even if someone starts and they say, okay, my name is George Sandman, and here's my email address, and they click forward. For that first screen, um, you you should get a notification that someone has started Discover, 
And even if they don't finish, you have now, you have a qualified lead. You have someone who said, you know, I'm willing to type in my information because we all know when we enter that information, we are saying, feel free to contact me, right? Not feel free to inundate me, but feel free to contact me. And uh, well, it's the big debate. Do you put that at the beginning or the end? Yes, that is the big debate. And what I would say is, and as we found with, you know, with some of our enterprise customers, properly qualified, properly qualified prospects will fill that out at the beginning. Right. And you're not going to fool anybody into filling it out at the end, which is why we've left it at the beginning. That's why business scan though is so effective because we're actually emailing it out to someone and saying, Hey, remember when we met, remember that conversation. Um, I was thinking about your business and, and, you know, now we're in a very, again, we're, we're, we're still with business scan high up in the, in the, uh, in the funnel, but, but we're asking them for information for less sensitive information. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Sure. Okay, guys, this was great. Does anybody mind if I post this? Oh. No, I don't, I wouldn't think so, but okay. Very cool. That'll be done. And uh, watch for uh, my, my morning's book, but uh, middle of the day, I'll, I'll go and, uh, put some comments in a circle. Awesome. Awesome, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate Hello. it. Anybody yeah. have ideas for topics for next week? Um, shoot them to me. And I'll Hello. take care of the passcode. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you.